Hello students, you are welcome to today's lesson. Today we'll be looking at another interesting topic, the structure of the earth. And our focus is going to be on the external structure of the earth. At this lesson, we'll be looking at various objectives. One, we should be able to define the external structure of the earth also be looking at the components or the layers that forms the external structure of the earth and also be discussing the characteristics of each of these layers or spheres that forms the external structure of the earth also at this lesson we'll be looking at the interrelationship among the spheres how do they interact how do they relate with one another all this is what we are going to be looking at looking at the external structure of the earth it refers to the spheres that interact on the surface of the earth creating the landscapes and living conditions that surrounds us. The head structures consist of seven major layers. We have the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, the biosphere, the mantle, the crust, and the core. These seven layers form the structure of the earth. But at this lesson, our focus is on the external structure and four major layers form the external structure of the earth these are the hydrosphere the atmosphere the biosphere and the lithosphere these four layers are the external structure now looking at each one of them we we'll have the atmosphere the atmosphere is a complex fluid system of gases and suspended particles the fluid system forms a gaseous envelope around the earth with no defined boundaries. The total volume of atmosphere is made up of gases like nitrogen, argon, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. A planet retains an atmosphere when the gravity is great and the temperature of the atmosphere is low. The Earth's atmosphere protects the inhabitants by absorbing harmful solar rays and maintaining a steady temperature. It also ward off many dangers of space, thereby making life possible on Earth. The atmosphere is made up of gases that are essential for photosynthesis and other life activities. It is an important reservoir for water and sources and other sources of precipitation. And it also forms a crucial part of the water circle. Looking at the atmosphere, it is composed of different layers based on temperatures. These layers are the the exosphere, the thermosphere, the mesosphere, the stratosphere, and the troposphere. Next is the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere is the total amount of water on planets. The hydrosphere includes water that is on the surface of the earth or planets, on the ground, and in the air. A planet's hydrosphere can be liquid, vapor, or ice. On Earth, liquid water exists on the surface in the of oceans, lakes, and rivers. Water helps to maintain the geological cycle. It plays a vital role in the Earth's climate. The hydrosphere provides water for domestic uses. It also serves as a medium of transportation. And it also provides water for industrial uses and 
also employment. So the hydrosphere serves as a tourist center for man, such as rivers and beaches. They are also used in agriculture in form of rain and irrigation system. They are also used in generation of hydroelectric power. Water is very crucial to life. Next is the lithosphere. The lithosphere can be defined as the outer boundary layer of solid earth and discontinuity within the mantle. It is a crustal system composed of various layers which are the core, mantle and outer crust. The lithosphere is also known as the geosphere. The outer thickness of this sphere varies considerably and it can range from 40 km to 280 km. The lithosphere forms the basis of all human settlements. The lithosphere aids transportation through construction of roads and railways. Next is the biosphere. The biosphere is made up of parts of Earth where life exists, all ecosystems. The biosphere extends from the deepest root system of trees to the dark environments of ocean trenches to lush rainforests, high mountain top, and transition zones where terrestrial ecosystems meet. The biosphere has a maximum thickness of only few kilometers and it is a narrow zone where complex biological and chemical activities occur. It includes organisms like plants, animals and microorganisms. The biosphere is of importance to man because it provides food for man. It also provides sources of energy food we said provides food for man man eats man must eat to survive so the biosphere makes this food available for man also the biosphere provides shelter for man and, and also it aids the balancing and purification of atmospheric gases. It also provides raw materials like timber for man for industries to use in the creation of various items. Raw materials like timbers which are used for construction and domestic purposes. Next we'll be looking at the interrelationship that exists among these four spheres. How do these phases of the Earth interrelate? Now, the four phases of the Earth are closely connected to each other. The biosphere, let's take the bed for example, flies through the air, which is the atmosphere, and water, which is the hydrosphere, flows through the soil, which is the lithosphere or the geosphere. And the spheres of the earth are closely connected to each other. A change in one sphere results in a change in two or more spheres. It is important to note that if the, the spheres of the earth stop interacting with each other, the weather would cease with no water circle as a result of plants and trees will not grow without water. Animals could not breathe without oxygen, and surface ocean current will stop moving without wind. Now you see the earth fairs have unique properties and features, but they must interact to drive the processes of the planet. With this, we have come to the end of the lesson. Please do well to attempt your quizzes and 
ask questions if there are any. Thank you and bye for now. now.